Welcome everybody to our uh, fall webinar training series. My name is Bill Norton with Tea Party Patriots. We're glad that you could join us tonight. Uh, we've got a great presentation for you. Um, I do want to uh, let you know that these presentations are available to review. Um, they'll be posted at teapartypatriots.org. Uh, you can also see plenty of other training material there and, and lots of other uh, very valuable resources. Uh, the other thing I wanted to uh, make you aware of is the American Dream Challenge that has already been underway, but we want to uh, draw your attention to that. Again, if you go to TeaPartyPatriots.org, you can see what the American Dream Challenge is all about. Um, but basically, it, it's a series of tasks and, and things that you can do uh, between now and the election to uh, reach your neighbors and friends and family with some important issues, and there's some great toolkits and, and some other things that, uh, that you can use that are right there on your fingertips. Uh, we also have our premiere of the Border States of America, which is a documentary on the border crisis. And if you go to borderstatesofamerica.com, you go there, sign up to participate in the premiere on Thursday night. Um, and then and you can see that great movie. And, and it, uh, it will blow you away, some of the things that's happening down on the border. Some fantastic uh, material has been put together with this documentary. So I wanted to draw your attention to those things, some great resources at TeaPartyPatriots.org and BorderStatesOfAmerica.com. Uh, tonight we have a great presentation for you. We have Kelly Carinder on, who is our National Grassroots Coordinator. Uh, Kelly uh, does a great job at at communicating with a lot of the local and state coordinators and all the different groups all over the country. And uh, she definitely has her finger on the pulse of the movement because she's uh, one of the very first people that, that was around with the, when the Tea Party movement got started. So it's a great pleasure and privilege to have Kelly on with us tonight. She's going to talk to us a little bit about getting out the vote and some strategies and techniques uh, related to that. So with that, uh, Kelly, let's go ahead and turn the time over to you. Okay, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We are going to talk about get out the vote tips. Next slide, please. Specifically, we are going to talk about getting out the vote if you are a normal person. And what do I mean by normal person? Well, I mean that we we've opened this um, these trainings up to you know all of our supporters, and many of our supporters are maybe only minimally involved in a group. They may not lead a group. They might attend a, a Tea Party group meeting or some meetings. Um, but they may not be totally involved, but they want to get involved right now and, and help out with, with getting out the vote and teaching people about our issues. Um, so I'm basically talking about someone who is not a 24-7 uh, political person who's not or who does, who's not working with a campaign. You know, somebody that has a few hours a week that wants to help out and is not a maybe addicted to politics like some of us, or um, you know re everything revolves around it. So that's what I call a normal person who still has a life. Um, so here tonight we will talk about some ideas that you can use if you are a normal person. Next slide, please. We are going to discuss uh, ideas about how to share your views with others in your neighborhood or community the best, most effective form of communication, how to deal with problems such as trolls, hecklers, apathetics, and undecided, and review key tips. And I think I might have made up the word apathetic, but uh, I think it works, and I think you all know what I mean, so we're going to go with it. Next slide, please. OK, so before we get started, I do need to make this disclaimer that you always want to check your local laws and regulations. Please don't break laws. And always ask permission from business owners if you're going to be on their property or you want to put something up in their, their store or on their windows or whatever. If you're in somebody else's property, then make sure that you ask their permission uh, because we do not want to make property owners angry. We don't want to violate their property rights. And if obviously if it's public property, we don't want to break any laws. Just as a quick example, I live in Seattle. There um, are you know regulations that run how many, like what kind of posters you can put up on lampposts and where, who gets to put them up. So just make sure you're following the laws. Okay, next slide. Okay, so there's going to be some ideas on your screen. I'm going to read them and then I'm going to expand on some of them. Some of them are 
apparent. We don't need to expand on it all. Um, sign waving at a busy intersection or some other place where motorists are trapped. And there's a place up in North Seattle that's right outside of a mall that's up there called Northgate Mall. Um, there's a very long stretch of road that has two lanes and has um, an island kind of those island things that run all the way down this, I mean, just I don't know how many blocks, like many, many, many blocks. And basically, you can't turn around when you're on that road. And it's very busy because it's the mall, and there's also like a Target and a Best Buy and other shopping places and foods. So it's always really busy, especially on a Saturday or a Sunday. And we've had a lot of good success at having rallies and just sign wavings there. Um, and it's the best because that whole stretch of blocks, these multiple blocks, there's all these stoplights. So all of the drivers are trapped. And so if you can, we, we line up this whole stretch of multiple blocks. Um, so for like five minutes or whatever, they are, you know, trapped and they have to see our message. So uh, it doesn't have to just be an intersection. If you've got a good place like that, that you can go and do your sign waving. Um, now, some people are working for candidates and campaigns, and so they'll have candidate signs. But if you want to get out the vote on our issues, um, you can always make your own sign about, you know, vote for freedom or vote for health care freedom or um, vote for liberty or um, you know, any of those sorts of sign suggestions. Um, if you have questions, you can always ask us if you want suggestions. Um, but that's where you can do it, too. Put up flyers or posters in public places, like at grocery stores, you know. Sometimes they'll have um, uh, those cork boards at the back near the restroom. And so you can try to put stuff up there, cafes, you know, coffee shops, uh, community centers, lamp posts. Like I said, again, just make sure you're following the rules of, of the business owner or the public property. Um, hand out flyers in high foot traffic areas. So examples of that are grocery stores, malls, parks, movie theater, you know, outside of movie theaters on the sidewalk, uh, churches, synagogues maybe out near a school. Again, I don't know what sort of rules are about loitering at a school, but make sure you follow those rules and um, you stay on public property, probably out like on the sidewalk or something. Um, but maybe universities, I know that's really easy. You can just walk onto a public university campus and pretty much hand out what you want. Um, near a Girl Scouts cookie sale table, possibly. I think maybe that's coming around soon, maybe. So um, wherever you think there's going to be a lot of people. Uh, invite friends, family, neighbors, coworkers, et cetera, over for a brunch or a dinner, have a house party, so something, you know, casual that's not going to, it's not like you're inviting them to a lecture or something, you know, it's just, hey, why don't you guys come over for brunch? I just want to talk to you about uh, the election, how I'm going to be voting, and just see if you have any questions. I, you know, I read up a lot. Be the expert that they would want to go to, especially if there's undecided people that you know, and especially if they kind of lean toward your, our way of thinking of they, they believe in free markets, they believe in freedom, they're just not sure what that means necessarily. Um, and a house party, this is what we do a lot of the time with our documentary. So Bill mentioned our, our documentary, The Border States of America, and this Thursday we had over 1,300 house parties that are going to happen. People ordered the DVD from us and sent it for free and a toolkit, so it's got but just different sample things they can use and discussion questions. Uh, so you can do that too. You can all of our movies that we've made, all of our documentaries are online. So if you wanted to do watch one of the documentaries, you could pull it up online and watch it and have people over. Um, look for and attend events nearby that would attract like-minded people. So gun shows are a great place to go for people that are liberty-minded. Um, sometimes uh, you know county fairs, whatever, just something, if, you know, look in, look at your local newspaper and see what events are coming up, or you can look online, there might be a community calendar, uh, maybe there's a veterans get together, and you can go and reach out to veterans. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, okay, more ideas. So invite one person over for coffee or offer to stop by their house for a one-on-one -on -one chat. It doesn't necessarily need to be a group of people. If there's somebody you think you can reach that's just a one-on-one -on -one conversation, then really make the extra special effort to reach out to that person. And something about that is uh, if you guys have read anything about the Obama campaign from 20, 2008 to 2012, you would know that 
one of the things they did, and pretty much why they won again in 2012, was they never shut down their campaign operation from 2008, and they spent the four years in between 08 and 12 building personal, having their volunteers build personal relationships with people, um, and even not talk about politics at all. Now we're getting really close to the election, so they might have to bring it up pretty soon. But they spent a lot of time just getting to know the people and being friends with them and becoming the expert. Um, so then when the election time did roll around, they were able to persuade people, and especially to persuade them at least just to go vote. Um, so one-on-one -on -one chat, chats are really effective. Put a sign in your own yard that's basically you know, an endorsement either of a person or an idea, um, and people take that more seriously than they do you know, random things that they just see out there. However, putting signs at busy intersections also does help just to um, build up momentum and excitement. I know living in Seattle especially, if I see um, you know, like a don't tread on me sign somewhere, I get very excited because I think, oh my gosh, there's another one of us. We're here. <laughs> um, you can assign one person to keep an eye on the signs in a particular intersection, and that gives and it gives somebody in your group something to do, po positive to do if they want to do something, but maybe they're not that comfortable talking to people. Um, it's a really good use of their time. And they just, you know, maybe a few times a week just drive by that intersection and see how your signs are doing. They need to put more out. They can more out, pick them up if they've fallen down. Call your friends and family. Uh, email them, et cetera. Make a personal pitch to them. And before you call them, write it down. What are you going to say? Because maybe to you know, your cousin, it's a slightly different pitch than it is to your coworker, um, because everybody has a different issue, and so that's important to them. So just make sure you jot down some ideas. Also, you don't want to ramble, because a lot of people don't like being on the phone, especially if somebody's just rambling. So write it down first. Use your social media accounts. Definitely use your social media accounts, especially Facebook, because so many people get suggestions from friends on Facebook. And I am sure most of you have done this before. When you're on Facebook, you see something a friend posts, and you click through that, and then you click something else, and, click, and then you're on this kind of like rabbit hole, internet rabbit hole search, where you're just clicking through the things and reading about stuff. So that happens a lot. Make sure that you're posting stuff. And um, I would specifically tag the people that you really want to reach and make sure they go vote. And you can bug them on, on, um, on election day or election month or whatever state you live in where however many days you have to vote. Make sure that they go vote. Because one, we want to make sure people vote, and two, we want to make sure they vote the right way. And especially if we know people that would vote the right way, but they're not voting, let's make sure they're voting. Next slide, please. OK. Uh, even more ideas. Host a public event at a restaurant with a friendly owner or a community center, and get them in the door with free food. This is something that I learned by watching uh, Street Fight, which is a documentary about the 2002 Newark, New Jersey mayoral race between Cory Booker and a guy named Sharp James, who just sounds corrupt, I think, based on his name. And he was. He was completely corrupt. Um, he was mayor and a state legislator at the same time, so he's pulling both salaries and like both pensions um, and benefits and stuff. It was crazy. But what I noticed in that documentary what I really remember about it, besides the corruption, was that both candidates always, always had free food. And they always had a ton of people at their events. So if you really want to um, get people in the door so that you can have a conversation with them, offer them free food. And that kind of goes for, say, Halloween, too, right? People come to your door asking for candy. So I hand out constitutions with the candy bars. Um, you can do the same thing there, or a flyer, you know, about your values, and and hope, hopefully, you know, say tell your parents to vote, vote this way, vote for freedom for you when when they go vote. Um, call into local radio shows, conservative shows to turn out the base, and independent shows to persuade them and turn them out. Remember, we want to turn out more of our voters and not more of the anti-freedom voters. And so you want to just you want to make sure that you're targeting your message correctly. Um, write letters to the editor. And I know I'm saying every day, and that's kind of a joke, but it's kind of not. If you can write a letter to the editor every day, do it. Because the more you send, the more likely one of them will get posted. And there are people that really do read those every day and take very seriously that someone in their community thinks like that. 
um, you know, to writing about, say, the amnesty issue and why it's so important and how we have to make sure that there's no executive amnesty. You could suggest people go to uh, theborderstatesofamerica.com and watch this documentary online for free. And then somebody reading that might look at that and say, huh, I'm going to go watch that because that's an issue that interests me. Leave flyers at the doors in your neighborhood. Again, if you know there's a staunch liberal and person in your neighborhood, you don't need to leave a flyer there. But if you don't know, go ahead and leave a flyer. Again, if somebody's not comfortable talking to strangers or talking to people very much, that's a really good task for them to do as well, um, just to go leave that flyer at the door. And make sure you don't leave anything in people's mailboxes if you do this, because I believe that is a federal crime. So do not do that. OK, next slide, please. OK, one more idea. From now until the election, I want you to always wear a relevant t-shirt. A lot of Tea Party groups have t-shirts. Some people have t-shirts that say, ask me about da, da, da. If you don't have one, you can get one made for really, really cheap at the local mall, probably. And um, I just suggest it say, ask me who I'm voting for. Ask me what I'm voting for. Um, or I'm voting for freedom. What are you voting for? Things like that. Uh, the Chicago Young Republican group, like a long time ago, I was in the Young Republicans, and I met their their chapter president. They had one of the largest Young Republican groups in the country. And one of the ways that they did that, and this is in Chicago, and one of the ways they did that was by wearing their Chicago YR t-shirts everywhere they went. They went to ball games. They went to, um, sorry about that. They went to, you know, they went bowling, they ran marathons, all this stuff. And they always wore their t-shirts. And so they always picked up and recruited new members. So if you have something, I mean, we only have, we have less than 30 days now. So you don't have to wear it for that long. You can get multiple t-shirts made so you can rotate and do laundry. Um, and it sends a message without you having to say a word, and people will ask you about it. Carry fl your flyers, your cards, your posters, et cetera, with you. Everywhere if, you're, if you carry a purse or a backpack, put them in there, and then have extra in your car so that when people ask you for something or you get into a conversation with somebody maybe about your shirt, you can pull something out real quick and give it to them with more information to go to X, Y, and Z website, uh, you know, our website or your website or whatever it is. Um, and and you can just be educating people all the time. Call, email, and Facebook your friends and family. Follow up with them, too. Did you vote, Aunt Mildred? You haven't, go vote. Make sure these people are getting out to vote. That is one of the other big things that the Democrat Party and the Obama campaign in particular are very, very good at. They are very good at getting people to go vote. Um, if somebody needs a ride to the polls, be that person that gives them a ride. If they need something else, whatever they need, you be there and you be that person and you help them. Engage people in conversation as you interact with them, like the, the grocery store clerk, because this is your last chance to get that one last vote. You can always strike up a conversation with somebody. And even if it's a little bit embarrassing or you feel a little uncomfortable, just take the plunge, do it, because even if you see that clerk again at some point, like they probably won't remember you that that well um, if, it, if it goes badly, but <laughs> most likely it will go fine because they have to be nice to you because you're the customer. So they might just smile and nod or you might actually give them something really, really good to think about. So don't be afraid. You can do it. Next slide, please. Okay. The best, we're going to talk about the best form of communication right now. This is the best way to communicate. Next slide. It's this. And next slide. And this. And this. Go ahead, you can go to the next slide. And the next one. OK, so what do all those have in common? It's just people hanging out, right? It's just people talking to people. You are the most influential person you know, pretty much. I know that sounds weird, but it's true especially with the people around you that trust you, that are your friends, that are your family. Obviously, if you have if you're friends with or your family member is somebody, you know, like Rachel Maddow, like they're not going to listen to you. But most of us don't have that. I mean, we might, but we know enough not to waste our time talking to that person. Find the people around you that do trust you, that you know well, and just talk to them. Um, all those flyers and posters and stuff that are good and we need to get our message out and that's a 
those are cheap and effective ways to blanket a community with our message, and we need to do those things. But the number one way to change, a, change hearts and minds and to persuade people is face-to-face -face conversations um, with people they know and trust. So have those, have those neighborhood conversations, and don't be afraid. Um, because I, I think we see a lot of times people, um, you know, angry people on TV, like on MSNBC or whatever, we think that all, all liberals or all other people who aren't necessarily in a Tea Party group might be like that, and that's just not true. Most people are normal people, like I was saying, and um, they might have a different point of view from you, but they will usually listen and have a conversation about it. Um, and then uh, the next slide, please. Again, don't be afraid to go to events that are already scheduled um, where people might have, have similar views to you. And I show this picture of these bikers, this biker gathering, because I remember one time my mom and dad and I, my parents are Tea Partiers too, we were up on an overpass bridge outside of um, a military base where people go to say thanks to the troops and they, they wave to them and hold American flags and whatnot. And um, a bunch of bikers went under the, under the three-way overpass, and, my mom, and they all honked and they waved, and they were really super excited about it, us being up there with American flags. And my mom turned to me and she said, "You know, when I was a kid, she's in her 70s. She said, you know, when I was a kid, I never thought I would be on the same side as the bikers because they were like gang members back then or something. So um, just remember, there's so there's so many people out there that." that are like-minded and they have groups and they get their groups get together and they may not be a Tea Party group but they might vote the way we're going to vote or want them to vote so make sure to remember them uh, and the next couple slides please you can just move through them kind of fast mmm ribs and the next slide and ice cream food I'm serious when I say this I think Food is the most underrated aspect of get out the vote that I've ever seen because people love free food and um, I just I wouldn't I would not forget about the free food so I think it's very important next slide so what I'm saying is basically be a neighbor be a friend be a sister a brother a parent a grandparent a coach a pastor a teacher a clerk a volunteer etc be yourself be who you are be genuine, be passionate, be accurate. If you don't know something, make sure you look it up. You can always email us. We have access to experts in a lot of areas. We can help you find the right answer. If you do get a question from somebody that you don't know, don't make up an answer. Just say, you know what, I'm not actually sure about that, but I will look it up and I will get back to you. And then when you get back to them and you have uh, evidence for what you're saying, you can back it up with news reports or papers or whatnot, they will trust you even more, and they will be really impressed by the fact that you actually went out, you researched it, and you came back to them. And that might, that alone right there, might persuade them to vote how we want them to vote. Be nice and smile. Uh, when we're nice, you know, the, everybody has this image of, of conservatives and of the Tea Party. So, and I know that we are the nicest people in the country. I know this. In the world, probably. So, just show it. Show how nice you are. Next slide, please. Dealing with problems. OK, problem number one, trolls. I know I, I said be nice, but this is a very accepted um, internet lingo and urban dictionary definition of trolls. OK, I did not make up this term. Basically, somebody, what is a troll? It's somebody who specifically wants to waste your time. In fact, I remember seeing in 2012 like a Democratic underground host or you know some left-wing person writing, hey, if somebody from the Romney campaign or from you know a conservative group comes to your door doorbelling, don't turn away. Like don't tell them that you definitely aren't going to vote for that person or you definitely don't agree with them. Don't send them on their way. Invite them in, have coffee with them, pretend like you're kind of interested, because then you eat up all of their time, and they won't get to go to as many doors. So, if somebody, let's say you're out flyering, or you're handing, you know, you're handing out flyers outside of on a public sidewalk or something, and somebody is trying to engage you in conversation, but you can kind of tell that they're pulling your leg, or um, if somebody is generally wasting your time, don't be afraid to just get out of the conversation. Realize they're trying to waste your time and move on. 
Um, just don't don't let them monopolize your time. That's it. That's the best way. And as, as we say online, don't feed the trolls. So just say thanks very much. I appreciate the conversation. And you can take this flyer and find out more about our positions on, on the website. Problem, hecklers, ignore them. Do not let them, do not let them um, get you off your game. Hecklers, you know, they might, you might be, again, you might be handing out flyers somewhere or you might have a community event. You know, maybe at the community center you decided to have um, cupcakes and invite everybody to hear and talk about, to talk about healthcare freedom or something. Um, and say so somebody is there and they're, they're just, being annoying, they're yelling out things, or you know, they're trying to distract you. First tip is prepare for this. Always be prepared. I always, anytime I have any event or I go anywhere that has to do with politics, I, I always expect that I that there will be a heckler there, that somebody will try to ruin my event. Uh, so one, when it happens, if it happens, it doesn't happen every time, but if it happens, I'm not I don't get freaked out by it because I expected it. It's kind of like always expecting something to go wrong at your wedding, and you don't freak out when it does. So just make sure you expect it. Then, if it happens, you ignore them. Don't let them see you sweat, right? Because really, who cares? Like, we have, we have a country to save. They can be rude, but whatever. Um, become allies with the people you're trying to reach. So if you're handing out flyers and there's somebody squawking and they're just like, they won't shut up and they're being really rude, as you're handing out flyers, you can look kind of motion of the person and just shake your head like, oh, gosh. Because now all of a sudden, when the person takes your flyer, they're going to say, this person I took the flyer from was very nice and very polite. And I like that person. And that person over there that's screaming their head off and being very rude and scary, well, they think the opposite way of this nice person. I'm more inclined to look at this flyer now for the nice person and maybe vote their way. So you can use them. And become allies, like, oh, gosh, isn't that person really annoying? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Some people just have no manners. Um, and then, of course, if they get out of hand, like especially if you are hosting an event and they're really disrupting you, then you can report them and have them removed. Or if it's a really, if it's a situation you think where you're in danger, then you can just leave and get out. So obviously, you know, follow your instincts and look at the situation that, as it's unfolding. Um, and if you need to, you can leave. Okay, next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, dealing with the problem of an apathetic person. Find the one issue the person cares about. Especially if you know the person, you probably already have an idea of what they really, really care about. Maybe it's education. Um, and then personalize it. So if they have kids, then try to really bring home the idea that if they don't vote, you know, their, ki their kids' curriculum, their kids' uh, textbooks, everything that their kid is learning in school comes down right now from the people who are elected. Um, you know, and maybe if your kid is in school with them, you could say, remember that paper that they had to write about how great FDR was uh, and how he got us out of the Depression, remember, and how we had to talk to them about how that was wrong? Like, there's... You can, you can, especially if you know the person's a friend or a family member, you know that there's things in their life that you can personalize it. So think about for each person who, what, you know, what is their, is their one issue that they really, really care about, and then how can I personalize it to them that, you know, may not work for somebody else, but it'll work for them. Um, the other thing you can do is uh, invite them over to watch one of our documentaries, because sometimes a film or something that's more artistic different than just just talking at a person. Um, it also doesn't, watching a movie or documentary doesn't require them to formulate a response right away where having a conversation does and that might make somebody uncomfortable. So just, you know, or hand them the DVD. Just say, hey, you know what, watch this and, and then we can talk if you want. Um, and then you can offer to be their vote buddy. So just say, look, I'll go with you to vote. Like, let's do this. Let's support each other in this. Uh, and just be a really supportive friend. Not pushy, but just supportive. Okay, and the last problem is undecided people. Very similar to the apathetic people, you know, find an issue that they care about and show them how um, our solutions, how conservative solutions are, the, are, are what they're looking for, for whatever that issue or problem is that they care about. Um, and then just make sure that you have facts to back, to back your arguments up uh, and something personal. 
So you're not trying to get them to care. These people care. They just don't know which way to go yet. So we want to make sure we're giving them facts and, facts and emotion to help push them in the right direction. OK, next slide, please. OK, so to review, be friendly. That is number one. Choose activities that you're comfortable with, but don't be afraid to try new ones. Again, we have less than 30 days. It is vital that we teach people about our issues, and sometimes we have to get outside of our comfort zone. And believe me, I have never been a fan of going door to door, but I do it because I have to, because I love our country, and I have to do it. So you just if you have to get outside your comfort zone, it's OK. Uh, remember your goal is to get more people to vote the way you want them to vote. Right? It's not to be right. It's not to prove a point. It's not to be better than somebody else. It's to get people to vote. So whatever, you know, maybe it's this person, you kind of do it in a funny way, or this person's dramatic, whatever, you know, change your message or the tone of your message, depending on who it is, um, not the content of your message, obviously. But just be flexible. And again, you know, do it with a smile. Don't let yourself get baited into wasting time or looking like anything but a happy warrior. Because that's the other thing a, a troll or a heckler might do, is to try to bait you into doing something stupid so they can get it on film. And then, lo and behold, now it's all over your local news. So just be the adult and make them make fools out of themselves. Um, and of course, face-to-face -face and food-to-face equals the best things ever. Very important. And the last slide, please. Remember, Ronald Reagan did not say, dude, freedom is super easy to maintain. Just sit back, relax, and assume the other side is doing the same. So let's get out there and make sure that when people vote this year, they are voting for personal freedom, economic freedom, and a debt-free future. And that is a presentation. And I would love to take any questions or comments. If people have uh, other ideas I didn't cover that they do that they find that are very successful, I would love to hear those and have them shared with the rest of the audience as well. Great. Thanks, Kelly. We appreciate that. You've got some great ideas and things there. Um, but uh, I think it'd be great to take some questions and I think uh, to hear some of what other people are doing would be a good idea as well. So um, here's how we can take some questions. If you notice uh, on your control panel, you can either raise your hand uh, or you can type questions into the question log. Um, as you raise your hand, we can call on you, we'll un unmute you, uh, and then you can ask your question. Uh, if you are wanting to ask a question, then we, uh, if you are connected using your computer, uh, microphone, and speakers, then make sure that you do have a computer microphone so that we can hear you. Uh, oftentimes people uh, get on and we can't hear them. Uh, the other option is uh, you can dial in, which that information should be there on your control panel as well. And as you dial in, then, then uh, we'll be able to hear you through your phone. So with that, um, let's go ahead and go to, uh, we have a question from Donna. Uh, Donna, you are on the air. Tell us uh, where you're from and your question. Hello, Donna. Are you, are you with us? Okay, Donna, we can't hear. We can't hear you. So I'm going to uh, mute you and put your hand down. And, and perhaps if you dial in, then that might be uh, a better way to go. So let's go ahead and go to um, Lori. Lori Crane. Lori Crane, where are you from, and what's your question? Are you with us, Lori? Yeah, this always seems to happen with the first couple of ones. I know. Also, if people can see, there should be also be a question log um, where if we can't hear you, you should be able to also enter a typed question so we can see those um, and then answer the questions. We can read them and answer the questions out loud if for some reason we cannot hear you. So let's see if we've got something in the question log real quick I can go with, and then we'll go back to people's hands who are raised. Let's see. Let's 
So the question we have here is, how would you speak to those who are cynical about both parties? The first thing I would do is I would listen to them. So I would be that friend that is a listener. And I would say, you know, tell me exactly how you're feeling. Why do you feel this way? I ask them questions. Because in the process of asking them questions, one, they're going to feel like they're listened to. And that's really important for human beings. Um, the second thing is you, in the process of asking them questions, you will learn what they care about. Um, and once you learn what they care about, maybe not in that conversation. You might need to go away and do a little bit of research. Um, but let's say there's a particular candidate you want them to vote for. Then maybe you can go away, do some research about where that candidate stands on that issue they care about versus the other candidate. Um, and then again, find something personal in their life that it applies to. Um, some people, you know, are, I've heard them talk about being worried about judicial appointments in the last two years of Obama's tenure. So um, for some people, that, that's what's motivating them to get out and vote. Uh, and I would take their concerns and their cynicism seriously. I think one of the worst things you can do is to say to somebody that you're trying to persuade is to mock them or to not take it seriously. So they say, look, I don't really, you know, I'm, I feel very simple about both parties. You know, the worst thing you could do is to say, oh my gosh, come on. The one party is obviously better than the other party. Oh, you know, if you do that, then they're immediately going to put up a wall and just be like, all right. I don't need to talk to this person anymore. So you want to let them know that you've heard them and maybe agree with them if you do. You know, yeah, look, I know. I feel the same way. You know, be, be on the same side as them. Be on their team. Um, but then explain why you're making the decision that you're making. And again, it doesn't all have to be in one conversation either, especially with somebody that you're friends with. If it's a random person that you meet at the grocery store, maybe you only have five minutes to try. And, you know, you do your best and you have to walk away. But if it's somebody you know, then um, listen and then just be gentle and try to be on their side and find something that will connect to them personally that they will really care about and try to show them that, that maybe that one of them will get up, go down the wrong path on that issue and maybe the other one um, won't be exactly the right path, but it'll stop the wrong path. I mean, you know, you got you have to find out what their buttons are and then and then how, to, how you can push them in a good way. OK, let's go ahead and go to uh, Karen uh, Bellamy. Karen, what's your, uh, what's your question? Where are you from? Oh, gosh. Sorry, guys. We're, we're having some issues here. Yeah. This, yeah. Not sure if Karen is uh, is paying attention. To Karen, are you with us? All right, let's go ahead. I'm going to put put your, uh, Karen's hand down, and we'll go to uh, uh, Jesslyn Holmes. Jesslyn, yes, where, where are you from, and what's your question? Okay, I'm from Arizona. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, we can, we can hear you loud and clear. Great, 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 great. I'm from Arizona, and I just uh, put in the question in the type box because I wasn't sure about the audibility. My question is, you kind of answered it just previously, but it's kind of more specific. How do you handle visiting with someone who has spent quite a bit of time in public office as a, senate, as a state senator, uh, House, Senate, um, town council, and things of that sort, and they really, and I find this often, with the older generation, for whatever reason, they see the Tea Party as wacko, and they lump us in with the AFP, Americans for Prosperity, in that they see us as folks that they they are Republican themselves, but they see us as folks that have made it more uncompromising, and right. so and they said statements that I know I've heard on the media before that it's, I don't feel is true, but they'll say things like, "Well, now nobody can work together," and it's. It's, I understand as well as you do that, that things have shifted far to the left, that what was modern is, is the new center is not center. How do you all go about visiting with somebody like that? Okay, 
So this is the the person you're trying to talk to is is a person that is a Republican, but thinks that the Tea Party is fringy and has made it really made it really hard for Republicans to work with other people. Correct. And I've okay. run across this before, and these individuals tend to be in their 60s and above. Okay. Well, I have a couple ideas. One is you could invite, if you're friends with this person, you can invite a bunch of tea partiers over for dinner. Just say, I'm having some people over for dinner. I'd love it if you and the wife could show up or whatever. Um, and have them over for dinner and have a really lovely time. Um, and, of course, prep your tea party group. Everybody except for this couple or this person would know what was happening. Okay, So you tell them, you, tell, you prep your tea party friends, and you say, okay, we're inviting this person over to show them that we are normal and we're just like them. So you'll have a lovely little dinner party and um, you, or brunch or something. You know, I don't, I'm not trying to say, like, you know, make things super hard for yourself, but some sort of little casual get-together. You know, and politics can come up. That's fine. Just, but just remind everybody ahead of time, okay, we're just going to, you know, let's make sure that we are showing them that we agree on a lot of issues. So if that person wants to repeal Obamacare, well, so do we, you know? And so you can say, yeah, we want to repeal do. Obamacare. Right. They do. And so, right, exactly. So show, you want to show them that, um, that you guys agree on the issues. Um, and, or you may not even talk about politics that night. Maybe not. Then after the dinner party, you can tell them either that night or the next day or whatever, just say, hey, you know what? You just had dinner with a bunch of Tea Party people. We are not at all what you've heard about. You know, we are just like you. We agree on the issues. Um, and we are totally willing to work with people who, who do agree, you know. Um, so that's, I think, one thing is when you meet people, they don't have the same, you know, little devil horns that you think that they do. Right. And, and so I think it's, it's harder for them to dismiss us once they've actually met us. And I, and I say that from experience being in Seattle where there are not many, very many of us. Um, and the liberal people I know, uh, some of them, the more tolerant ones, uh, thinking, oh gosh, okay, well I may hear all this stuff about tea partiers in the news, but I know a tea partier and she's not like that at all. So that must mean that that's not a very accurate description. Okay. Um, so I would say so something like that, or maybe just an informal coffee out, you know, um, and you could even, or you could say, look, what's something, what's something that um, you'd like to see happen locally? And the person could say something and say, yeah, you know what, our Tea Party group feels, feels the same way. Um, why don't we work on that together? Like find a project you can work on with that person locally. Um, I, just, I just think face-to-face, -face, when, people, when people meet each other, it's very hard to continue thinking those bad things about them. Um, okay. You know, and then you can also ask them for specific examples of why they think that. You know, if it's some news report, you say, okay, why don't you send me that? Send me that article. Let me look at it. You can look at it. You can say, you know what? That's not a Tea Party person. That's just some random person on his own that's doing that or, or whatever. Um, I would just find as many opportunities as you can to, to introduce that person to Tea Party ideas. Ask them to come to a Tea Party meeting. You know, just say, look, I'll owe you one. Come, just see for yourself. Um, we are, we're just like you, and we want the same things. Um, and I would start there, and then you can kind of see how it unfolds. Okay. Um, because after that, then the person might say, well, okay, maybe it's a little better than I thought, but what about this and this? Then they might start asking you specific questions that you'll be able to address um, easier because it'll be a specific problem or a specific question. Um, you know, and you can, you know, and uh, there's a couple other things. You can point out that, you know, the House Representatives, that the Republicans only won that because of the Tea Party. You can talk about um, Marco Rubio, who is the GOP, you know, they love him. They love Marco Rubio. But he wouldn't have even been, he wouldn't have won the primary if it hadn't been for the Tea Party, and he certainly wouldn't have won the general either. Um, so you can say, look, the Tea Party is the heart and soul of the conservative party and um, you know we're, we're there to knock on doors and we're there to do good things and we're just asking you know go through the Republican platform with them and say what look at what do you find different what's different about the Republican platform versus the Tea Party platform 
And if he says, well, it's just about the, your tone or whatever, I mean, you can always pull up examples of Republicans with crazy tones um, and just say, look, there are, are people, there are loudmouth people everywhere in every group. And by and large, people in the Tea Party are very nice and very cordial, and they're willing to work hard. And you, you should get to know some of us a little bit better. So you be Kelly, as nice as you can be. <laughs> OK. Yes. And Kelly, adding to that question, that made me think of a secondary question. Um, when you're doing that, and you're at maybe a large church, and you have individuals in that church that you know are Democratic, and they voted and campaigned and worked for the election and re-election, but they hold the same views of the platform of the church as you do, would you ever go up and visit with them and confront them and ask them Absolutely. about Absolutely. You would? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And actually, I mean, I think handing out, um, like standing on the sidewalk outside of the church and handing out flyers um, and engaging people in conversation that way, um, or say, you know, let's say, let's say you put together a little, um, I don't know, let's say there's a cafe in town that has like a large room, meeting room you can you can book. Um, and you can say, hey, look, after church next week or, or today or whatever, I'm, ho you know, I'm hosting a, just an informal get-together. I'd love to see you there. We're going to talk about this and this and this. And see if you can get as many people there. Or if you know them personally, like I said, invite them over for coffee to your house or you know, sit down with them somewhere. Um, I would. I would just say, look, here is, this is what we, this is what our church believes. This is what you voted for. I'm just curious, and don't be accusatory. I'm just curious. How do you square those things? You know, it just I I don't understand. And as a friend or a fellow church member, I I just don't understand. I would love for you to explain it to me. And then as they explain it, you might be able to pop in and, and have a conversation about it. And and you're going to have to use your instincts about each individual that you're talking to. Some people, you'll be able to you'll be able to tell that you can poke and push and prod like right then and there. And other people, you're going to have to say, you know what, it's not going to work for this election. Maybe it'll work for 2016. I got to work on this person. It's going to take some time, and I need to be very gentle and not pushy with them. Um, so just use your instincts and don't push if you don't think that it's going to work. It'll turn them off more. Um, and again, find you know if the per find what the person's issue is, and especially if it relates to the Republican platform or your church's doctrine whatever, if that issue is really important to them, highlight it and say, look, I'm a friend of yours. And I think you ought to think about this. You know, I'm not telling you what to do. I just think you ought to think about it. To put, plant the seed. You might just have to plant the seed for now, and it might bloom later. OK. Thank you. Thanks for being on. Yeah. <laughs> Before my precinct committee of me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for your question, uh, Jessalyn. And then um, let's see, we had another question. Actually, had that one we answered in the answer log. So right now we don't have any questions. Let me just check check the uh, let me just check the question log here and see if we've got any other questions. While you're doing that, I just want to remind people that if you if you only saw half of this, or you want to watch it again, or you want to share it with somebody, um, all of our all of our presentations this fall are archived on the website. So if you go there, um, there's one of the banners on the home page is the fall training series, and you can click on that, and then it, it will take you to various links to all of these presentations. This one will get up in a couple of days. So you can rewatch it. You can post it on your website. You can email it out to your friends, post it on your Facebook, whatever you want. If you find something particularly useful or you want to share it. So there was one more question that doesn't necessarily relate directly to your presentation, but I think somebody that jumped on a little bit late and I think, think they're looking at this last slide here and they're asking, what, what do we mean by economic freedom? So. Um, I'll let you answer that question, Kelly. But but first, if you go to our website, teapartypatriots.org, um, all of this messaging that we have on pursue your American dream, personal freedom, economic freedom, and a debt-free future, there's some great uh, verbiage that goes along with, with all those three core values in our main uh, pursue your American dream theme. But what do, you, what do we mean by economic freedom, Kelly? 
Okay. Well, as, as Bill said, you know, some of the specifics that when we say economic freedom, um, we want a an economy that's growing. You know, right now we have an economy that's really restricted. Um, part of the reason it's restricted is we have high tax rates. Um, we have high government spending. All of that comes out of the pocket of hardworking Americans who um, know better what they what to do with their own money that they earn. Uh, you know, we have each of us has a limited time on Earth, right? And what we choose to do with our lives um, and our bodies, the work that we do with our hands, you know, with our minds um, on this Earth. We believe that what you do with that life, it belongs to you. And you know best what to do with it, whether that's um, giving to charity, whether that's building um, you know, multiple businesses. And we believe when people pursue their own American dream, um, that everybody is actually better off. So um, allowing people to keep the fruits of their labor is the compassionate way to operate, is the compassionate way to live. I always think about people like Steve Jobs, um, who was obsessed with just creative creativity, right, and, and creating the best product and the most intuitive product and the most attractive product at Apple. Um, he always wanted to just break boundaries and, and, and do new things and exciting things and be the best. I mean, he was also a, phil a philanthropic guy. and um, you know, it wasn't necessary for him. It wasn't necessarily about the money. It was about the product and and just being the best. Um, but from our from our liberal friends, what we hear is that even that is not good, right? Like it always has to be this um, this greater good. Well, for him, creating the best product he could possibly create did create greater good. Um, so we want we want that for everybody. Um, we want everybody to have a chance to earn more money. Um, we want businesses to be able to hire more people. We want people, we want policies that will enable opportunities for everyone, you know, to find good jobs and to grow businesses. Um, we want the United States to be the number one country in the world for economic opportunity. We want people to across the world who look at their own governments to say, man. My government sucks. I can't even build a business here because there's no freedom. Uh, I want to go to that place called the United States of America. So I'm going to immigrate legally, and I'm going to go there, and I'm going to start my business. You know, I used to work with, um, before I started doing Tea Party stuff, I worked with a lot of people who were uh, ex-cons, who were ex-drug users or current drug users. Um, they were, you know, poor a lot of them were on welfare. And I cannot tell you how many of those people, when we asked them what their um, long-term dreams were, what their long-term goals were, at least half of them were to start their own business. Um, so we want to be a place where a little, say, say a little barber shop, you know, a, little, a, guy that has, a guy that has some clippers and some razors, and he wants to start a little barber shop out of the basement of his home can do that. He doesn't have to file all this paperwork. He doesn't have to pay a bunch of licensing fees. And he doesn't have to jump through a bunch of government hoops because some bureaucrats and lawmakers decided to get together and make it hard, maybe because they have some crony barbershop friends that don't want any competition or whatever it is, right? Like, let the man do this. There were so many people that I worked with that, regardless of the fact that they didn't graduate from high school or even finished middle school, maybe, had great ideas and were really hard workers and actually probably if they had the freedom to do this, could start businesses out of their homes and be and be successful. Maybe they wouldn't be Bill Gates, Apple computer, you know, uh, Steve Jobs successful. I don't know. Maybe they would be. But um, successful enough to provide for themselves and their families and be upstanding members of the community and contribute that way. And, but they probably won't be able to get past all the red tape. Um, so we don't, we don't want that. Washington has made it extremely difficult for the average person because of the cronyism and the payoffs and the extortion and all that to get ahead 
uh, and they definitely do not respect our tax dollars. I'll give you one more quick example. You know, with all this Ebola stuff going around, and you have some people trying to say, oh, well, because they budget the GOP and the conservatives and the Tea Party cut the budget of the CDC, and they want to cut government, and this is exactly what happens. They don't have enough funds. And yet, at the same time, we are, they're willing to fund um, crazy things like researching Chinese prostitutes or something. You know, I mean, you hear all these crazy projects. So they take the money that you work, your sh the short life that you have, that you work hard for, that is your, is your work that you do. They take that and they put it into things that are completely wasteful. When, you know, at the very least, they could be putting it into, you know, making sure they don't spread Ebola around the country, if that's what they say that they're there to do. So I don't know if that explained it still. I don't know if you want to take a chop at it too. Um, but you can, you know, and like Bill said, you can read a lot more um, in detail at our website as well. But um, it's kind of my long, my very long-winded answer. Well, good answer. So thank you so much. And that's all the questions that we have. And that's perfect timing because um, that's how much time we've got for our webinar tonight. So again, I want to remind you all to go to teapartypatriots.org. And, uh, and you can revisit this presentation again if you'd like uh, it'll be back it'll be up uh, by tomorrow and we also have the American Dream Challenge if you're looking for things to do between now and uh, election day on how to reach your friends family neighbors um, we've got a lot of great tools and, and things associated with the American Dream Challenge uh, and then we also have the border states of America.com go to that site sign up so that you can take part in the premiere uh, of the documentary on Thursday night. So Kelly, thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you. And those of you attending, thanks for attending with us tonight. And be sure to join us next week, same place, same time. Um, we've got a couple more weeks of these fall uh, training uh, webinars. Uh, I think in a couple weeks we'll probably have uh, a couple surprise guests, I hope. And so uh, make sure you tune in to see uh, uh, what we've got in store for you. So thanks again for joining you, and you all have a good night.